have they started ac in aran yeah ac have started okay fine so actually uh, this is one of the last chapters for electromagnetism and mm -hmm. here what happens is we are talking about circuits where current changes direction so any household circuit it's not a direct current it's not dc it's alternating current where uh, current is periodically changing its direction so the current is a function of time and it becomes positive and negative generally it's like this i is equal to i not sin omega t plus pi so it's a sine curve and you have you have current as going from plus i not to minus i not plus i not to minus i not and for one time period half the time it is plus and half the time it is negative right yeah yeah now this sort of situation <clears throat> comes because of the way it is generated so if you think about an ac generator what happens is you take a magnet you take north and south poles then there is a magnetic field in this space between them and you take a current you take a loop yeah and that loop is going to be rotated by a motor so there is a motor which will turn and that loop will turn like this so since magnetic field is like this for instance at this initial moment there is zero flux through the loop right mm, yeah yeah but as right. it goes from zero to let's say loop is oriented like this now 90, 90. Right? then the flux has increased a lot right yeah so during the process of this flux increasing current will flow in a certain direction to oppose that right correct right yeah there will be induced current and that induced current will be in such a direction it should be in this direction like this induced current in the loop so that mm. it creates a magnetic field opposite to the magnetic field of the magnet yeah right, right yeah so during the process of going from 0 to 90 degree this induced current was like this but when it turns around and comes this way and reverses itself and becomes flat again then flux is decreasing in this portion right mm, yeah so current will go in the opposite way now opposite direction so current will continually keep changing direction as the loop keeps rotating right yeah, yeah. so that that generates that alternating current sort of a situation so that is something that you need to be aware of and this type of current is used in your household circuits uh, on a regular basis so now uh, he has described in scv there is emf induced as the coil rotates so what he is saying is flux through the coil will be b dot ds integral So that will be B A cos theta. Theta is the angle that the uh, normal to the area makes with the magnetic field, mm -hmm. and since that is variable, it can be written as omega t. Theta changes with time and changes according to your angular velocity of rotation with respect to time, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you'll get this, and you'll get d phi by d t minus will become B A omega. Sine omega t. Sine omega t. Yeah. And this will be your EMF induced, and you will call this EMF induced. This is called E naught. E naught sine omega t will be your EMF induced. And if there are not just one coil, there is a lot of turns on this coil, then you will put an N here for N turns, right? Yeah. So your EMF induced comes out to be your N B A omega. Sine omega t, which is called E naught sine omega t. So this is your EMF and this is your current in an alternating current circuit, right? Hmm. Now, yeah. 
both the things are obviously changing with time and become plus and minus depending on what the sign value is right yeah good so what we will do is first thing we'll do is <clears throat> talk about this instantaneous and rms part and then we'll go on to circuits where uh, ac sources are there so instantaneous current is what we just wrote i is equal to i naught sine omega t plus phi because obviously current changes at time so instantaneous value will be the value that comes out of this right mm, yeah right yeah. yeah but if this is a sine curve you want to have some sense of what is the average value of the current okay so 0 to t, your time period t here will be 2 pi by omega because this is an equation which looks like an SHM equation. So all the formulas there will be same, right? Hmm. Time period for the current is 2 pi by omega. And uh, now average value of the current. So in definite integrals, we saw that the average value of any function f of t can be written as integral of f of t dt divided from say 0 to t divided by the integral of just dt from 0 to t, right? Yeah. yeah. F average. We saw that this is the mean value of the function or we can say that area under the curve, whatever it was, overall area should be equal to another situation where it was a constant curve till that point, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If this area matches this area, then this is the average value, right? Right, yeah. We are saying F average into this interval length should be equal to total area, right? Correct. So I average also, we will take integral 0 to t I naught sine omega t plus phi by dt by t, total length of this interval, right? Hmm. Correct. So now, depending on a situation, if you take zero to time period here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you take zero to time period t, then you will realize that over one time period, sine function will give zero answer on the integration, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Correct. Obviously, because half the time period will be plus and it is symmetrical. So it will be equal plus and equal minus. No? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can put it and check. It will come zero, right? So I average over one T, I average will come out to be zero. So that is not a very useful thing for us to use because we know current is there in the circuit. We just, we, and we average value is being zero doesn't mean much because effects of current will not depend on the average value. They will depend on something slightly different. For example, mm. one common effect of current is the heating effect of current, right? Yeah. It depends on I square RT. Right. 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 So what we really care about is I squares average, right? Mm -hmm. like, the problem here, the reason we are thinking about this is that uh, normal DC current current was always constant. So we didn't have any issues. We could write just I square RT and find out, but here current is variable. So if you want heat generated in a resistor or something like that, then you need to be able to say something about the, I square value, right? What yeah. is the value of the I square that you should use here? Because the formula won't work directly. You will have to integrate and all. So can we find out a average value of I square that we can use, right? Hmm. So what we need is not the I average because I average comes out to be zero. We need I squares average. So I yeah. square is called mean like this is called square of the current. And if you take mean of that mean square current, right? We are trying to find out that. So mm -hmm. I squares average value, right? So that will be integral of I square, which is I naught square sine square omega T plus pi DT yeah. from zero to let's say capital T divided by capital T, right? Any functions average can be done by this method. So this is just average of this function, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we'll write it as I naught square half minus half cos two omega T plus two phi. And 
integrating this, we have to integrate this thing, 0 to t by t. So this will be small t by 2, so capital T by 2 minus half sine 2 omega t plus 2 mm -hmm. phi by 2 omega, and this will be evaluated yeah, yeah. from 0 to t, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So we'll have I, I naught square by t outside, and this is the thing. So let's calculate this. 2 omega t, omega at capital T would be uh, 4 pi, right? You will get 1 by 4 omega sine. This is a 2 omega into t. t is 2 pi by omega. So yeah. 2 pi. 4 pi four plus pi. 2 pi minus 1 by 4 omega. And that will be sine 2 pi, right? When you put 0. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. So since sine sine has a period of two pi, so sine four pi plus two pi is same as sine two pi. So this part gets cancelled, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. This part mm -hmm. gets cancelled, and you are left with just this much, which comes out to be i naught square by two, right? Mm -hmm. So this is average is becoming i naught square by two, right? So your mean square current is equal to peak current, peak amplitude of current square by two. So root mean square current. This is root mean square, right? Will be equal to root of this, which is I naught by root two, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is your I RMS. I RMS current is I naught by root two. The purpose of this, the usefulness of this is that now we can say that in terms of say heating effect of current, I don't have to use I naught square RT. Obviously that will be wrong because current is not a DC value of I naught, right? So right. I will have to use something which approximates the I square average. So what is that? Mean square current. So I naught square RT by two, right? Yeah, yeah. Heating effect over one time period will simply be I naught square by two into RT. Because this is the mean value of I naught square, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Mean value, yeah. So you're saying I RMS square RT is the heating effect in one time period, right? Because this is I RMS square, no? Yeah, I yeah. RMS square is equal to I square average is equal to this. So, what we can say is that the AC circuit behaves as if a DC current of I RMS is flowing. The, the AC circuit is much more complicated. Current is alternating and all. But you can remove that complication and think of it as a DC circuit of I RMS current. Because that would give the same amount of heat generated here. No? Yeah, right. So, uh, RMS current is basically I naught by root two. And in many applications, you'll realize that your DC circuit can be thought of as an AC. So uh, your AC circuit can be thought of as a DC with a value of I naught by root two rather than mm -hmm. AC with the maximum of I naught. Right. 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 So that is what he's showing. 39.3 is the derivation for I RMS. Then after that, he's saying uh, heat generated in one time period. So he has done it in a slightly different way. He has just actually calculated the U that is generated by doing integral of I square R into DT over one, over one time period. And that he has actually calculated. It came out to be I square RMS RT. So then he's saying, thus, if we pass a constant current I RMS through the resistor, it will produce the same thermal energy in a time period as that produced when the alternating current I passes through it, right? Mm -hmm. Is everyone understanding what is happening here? Yeah. 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 So similarly, a constant voltage of VRMS applied across a resistor produces the same thermal energy as that produced by the voltage V is equal to V naught sine omega. V naught sine. Yeah. 
the alternating ha huh, these statements are also valid if we consider a long period of time so far what we have derived is for one time period <laughs> this statement is also be true if it is a long period of time okay long period of time will mean many time periods right yeah the alternating voltage and alternating current are generally measured and mentioned in terms of their rms values so when you say there is a 220 volt ac uh, supply to your house what it really means is the rms value is 220 volts the v rms and the real peak voltage will be v rms is equal to v not by root 2 yeah. 220 into yeah. 2 or around 311 volts is the peak voltage of your actual emf okay uh since the uh, potential difference is also written in this way and current is also written in the similar sign function sort of a way obviously mm -hmm. if we have defined i rms and derived that is equal to i not by root 2 we can also say v rms will be equal to v not by root 2 right because the functions are the same so the yeah. uh, square Uh, average will be same v not same square by two yeah. right? right yeah okay so this is like basic stuff then now we'll start discussing the real thing which is circuits simple circuits involving ac involving alternating current so so for example an ac source is denoted by this symbol to denote the fact that it is not the same as a dc battery this 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 symbol suggests that it is a sine curve because actually emf is a variable thing yeah. so let's say emf is a sine curve like this right and there is a resistor here right mm -hmm. so this is a simple ac circuit containing just one resistor so if okay. you start from a point here and go go across in a circle you can write kirchhoff's law as if you cross this you get e not sin omega t and let's say i current is flowing in the circuit so you get a yeah. minus ir minus minus therefore your i will become e not by r sin omega t right know, yeah and this part you will call as a your i not so it will be i not into sin omega t right correct so if your emf is like this your current in a pure resistor circuit there is nothing else there's just a resistor will simply be e not by r sin omega t right hmm so this yeah. is a purely resistive circuit and current has the same phase as the emf same phase by that we mean it's not like when emf becomes maximum current is not maximum right emf will become maximum at a certain moment in time right yeah and you will see that yeah. the current will also become maximum at that time at that time yeah same time yeah if it was slightly different if it was like this i not sin omega t plus 5 right and emf was e not sin omega t then they are slightly dis displaced no the maximum yeah, mm -hmm. so that you will say that there is a phase difference then current will become maximum before emf becomes maximum EMF. yeah yeah or current will become max uh, current is ahead basically right yeah right current is ahead of the emf curve by some phi but in this case it is not like that it is very straightforward hmm. so the second case is if you take a emf which is varying and put a capacitor right so uncharged capacitor let's say we have put okay and there is a emf that is changing so so emf is e not sin omega t and let's say at time t we are saying that charge q has collected here and minus q here right so as we go from this end to right. to back we will write kirchhoff's law equation as e not sin omega t minus q by c is equal to 0 right <clears throat> right right so yeah potential difference increases and then drops okay. by q by c right yeah so this should be zero and you will get 
naught sine omega t is equal to q by c and now this equation we can differentiate to get e naught omega cos omega t is equal to 1 by c dq by, by dt c. yeah right and yeah. dq by dt is the rate at which the charge on the capacitor is increasing which should be also equal to the current in the cell. current current in the cell. so i is equal to c e naught omega cos omega t right so we can write i as e naught by 1 by omega c because then that will go up and become c omega right yeah into uh, cos uh, omega t can be written as sin omega t plus pi by 2 yeah 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 sin omega t plus pi by 2 is equal to cos omega t right yeah mm -hmm. so what we are getting here in this case is slightly different so you had a battery having um, you had a variable voltage source like this and your current is coming out to be E naught by 1 by omega C sine omega T plus pi by 2, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can say that current leads the EMF by pi by 2 phase, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. By pi by 2 in phase, correct? So, right, yeah. When the EMF is zero, the current is already maximum. Maximum, yeah. Right? And when the current is maximum, EMF is maximum, current has come down current to zero. zero. Right? So, if you draw your sine curve here for EMF, you will get a cost type of curve here, right? Yeah. Something like this. Yeah. It's already zero, right? Here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when right. EMF right. is zero current is already maximum, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so we say current leads the EMF by pi by two because in the current function, you have omega t plus pi by two when EMF was omega t, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this quantity, this quantity is sort of taking the place of what resistance did earlier, right? We earlier took took this as the resistance no in the yeah, previous case when uh, there was a just a resistor in a circuit right we yeah, had current know. was e naught by r no right yeah the peak value was e naught by r here it is e naught by this this thing right now this thing will have to have units of resistance correct you can mm -hmm. check that as well. You can confirm that one by omega C always have has units of resistance. Why does it have to have? Because if your output here is current and if you have voltage here, then you have to do V by resistance only, right? Yeah. Because sine will just give a number value. It is going to be mm -hmm. dimensionless here, right? Yeah, right, right. So one by omega C has units of resistance. You can check that also by actually doing the dimensional analysis for this, right? So right. Uh, what we can say is, see, we can write a Q square on top and a Q square on bottom and C and Q square mm -hmm. by C has units of energy, right? Mm -hmm. Q square by two C will have units of energy and so maybe there is a slightly better way. One second. Q is equal to CV. So uh, CVV, right? So this is units of charge, right? Yeah, yeah, charge. Voltage by omega charge. So Q. And uh, this is voltage will be... Uh, omega has units of 1 by omega 2 pi by T. So 1 by time. So time comes on top, right? Yeah, yeah. And Q by yeah. T is really current, right? Current, current. V by Q I by is R. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah, correct. Yeah. It has to have units of R, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this thing, but actually it was a capacitor, right? It was a capacitor and this quantity is having units of resistance, right? So this is called the mm -hmm. reactance. Mm -hmm. Reactance of a capacitor of a capacitor. So, which is sort of a combination of its capacitance and omega for the circuit, 
which sort of acts like a resistance due to the capacitor, right? The reactance of a capacitor is one by omega c, mm -hmm. right? And you are using it in the same way that you use resistance in the purely resistive circuit, right? E naught by one by omega c you have to do, correct? Yeah. Is yeah. everyone understanding what we are saying? Mm. We are just defining mm. this as yeah, reactance. Yeah. Yeah. This is just like a resistance equivalent for a capacitor. Yeah. Yeah. When it acts in, a, when it is in a AC circuit, this is what happens. And what you need to know is that if your EMF is like this, your current will lead the EMF by pi by two, right? And yeah, all right. So yeah. You could have been given slightly weird situations where EMF would be given as e cos omega t and you have current as e naught sine omega t plus phi and you are asked to find phi right something like this can be asked if it is a purely capacitive circuit right so so you can say mm -hmm. that cos is actually sine correct. phi by yeah. 2 plus omega t right correct yeah so this thing plus pi by 2 should be equal to this thing right This is the phase mm -hmm. of the EMF, no? Huh. Whatever yeah. is the phase of the EMF, you have to add so pi by I... 2 to get the phase of the current, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Omega t plus pi, pi should be equal to omega t plus phi. So pi should be equal to pi actually. Pi, right, yeah. So be careful. Sometimes they will change things or they will, like I could have written this one as minus E naught by 1 by omega c sine omega t. Uh, sine omega t, right? See, mm -hmm. because if you do pi plus omega t, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, like, see, current EMF is E naught cos omega t, and current is now minus something. So, whenever there is minus and all, convert always to sine something. So, sine pi plus theta is minus sine theta, right? Use that identity. Correct. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you use that identity, the minus should come out and it will become minus should go away. You'll get E naught by one by omega C sine pi plus theta. And after that, you can figure out what is the phase difference and all. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing to remember is that resistor gives zero phase and capacitor gives plus pi by two phase. Right? So current mm -hmm. in the capacitive circuit will be leading the EMF. Now, if you look at an inductor, for leading, example, yeah. inductive circuit. Yeah. So what we have is simple AC source and an inductor. Uh, AC source and an inductor. Now again, you cross here, you get E naught sine omega T. And let's say current right now is I, then potential difference across this will be minus L di by dt, right? We yeah. know this, right? Potential across the inductor is this. This is the EMF induced in that inductor, no? Yeah, right. Correct. We have done how inductors induce an EMF which is opposite yeah, to the direction of the current, the... right? Opposite, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Minus L di by dt. Because this is a back EMF induced by the inductor, right? So we'll right, say yeah. minus L di by dt, total potential drop. Now you have come back to the same point is zero, right? So you get mm -hmm. E naught by L sine omega t is equal to di by dt. And you can just integrate this E naught by L sine omega t dt integral is equal to di integral. Yeah. Zero to i, zero to t. 0 to t, 0 to i, right? So you'll get i is equal to minus E naught by omega L, right? Uh, minus E naught by omega L cos omega t from 0 to t, right? Yeah. Something like this, correct? So yeah. what you will get is some E naught some constant will come when you put zero and some cons minus E naught by omega L 
cos omega t plus some constant, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. So we can say that uh, since EMF was a sine function, your current should also be a sine or a cosine function, and EMF current should also be basically periodic, right? So if your EMF average was zero, EMF average over one period was zero. Your current average over one period should also be zero. So this C should actually be zero because if you have a constant C, then your current is a constant current, right? Mm. Yeah. So you cannot have the C physically speaking because current average should also be zero in this zero, yeah. for, uh, sinusoidal EMF, right? This is an AC source EMF. So you, since EMF is also averaging zero over one time period, your current should also average zero. So we will remove this C and we'll say your current is coming like this. So we will modify this slightly. Why? Because we want it to look like we, we should be able to say the phase, right? So yeah, so same there. function. Yeah. So this uh, same function should be there. So if we write cost like this, this is fine, but then minus is there. So we need to remove the minus. We will say E naught by omega L sine omega T minus pi by two, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. Hmm. So if your EMF source was E naught sine omega T, your current is coming omega T minus pi by two, right? So yeah. in capacitive circuit, it was coming plus pi by two. Now it is coming minus pi by two, right? Right, so right. What we are getting overall is if your EMF source was like this, E naught sine omega T, your current source becomes E naught pi omega L sine omega T minus pi by two. Minus pi by yeah. So mm -hmm. current is pi by two behind, lags behind the EMF, right? Yeah, yeah. By pi by two phase, correct? Yeah. And what we are getting is notice now this thing, this quantity takes the place of the resistance, right? Omega L should have units of resistance again. Correct? Right. Because otherwise, how will it be current? There is uh, EMF yeah. by omega L, right? So voltage by some current only will give you resistance, right? So right. We, can, we can check that also. Omega L will be, omega will have units of one by, uh, units of time, one by time. So one by time. Inductor by time. And inductor, let's use some formula to connect inductor. So you know half, okay, you know flux is Li, so that flux units we'll need to figure out. Okay, let's not use that. Let's use half Li square is energy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll say yeah. uh, L square I square by 2L is energy. But that is not useful. So we'll say half Li square. So energy by I square, right, is inductor, mm -hmm. right? Energy by current square, right? Yeah current square into time. So, okay. So current into time is charge, right? Charge. Charge, yeah. And there is a current still there and there is energy there, right? Right. So joule, joule per coulomb is voltage, right? And V by I is charge, is resistance. You understand? Mm -hmm. There yeah. is energy, yeah. energy yeah. by charge is who volt and volt and one I is there, right? So you will get R, correct? So this omega L also mm. has units mm. of resistance. Mm. So it is called reactance mm. of the inductor. Of yeah. the okay. inductor. So now we know all the three simplest circuits, simple circuits where you have just a source which is AC and you have either a resistor or an inductor or a capacitor, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So the yeah. next type of circuit that we 
like we know what to do. We know EMF will be this, then what will be the current? We know how to get the peak value of the current and what is the phase of the current? Everything we know, right? Yeah. Mm. So you can find instantaneous current and stuff here. The next thing that we need to do is to solve for circuits that are more complicated. Solve for more complicated circuits, which are basically combinations of these, right? So combinations of, for example, if you have a resistance and a capacitor and an AC source, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So normally, like we have done resistance plus capacitor in a DC source earlier. When you saw charging circuit and discharging circuits, right? Mm -hmm. We had a battery mm -hmm. and we put an uncharged capacitor and a resistor here, right? Yeah. We knew what to do. We say, let's say I charge at time T, there was charge Q here collected. And you can say EMF minus Q by C minus IR is zero, right? And after that, you integrate this My because this is DQ by DTI, right? I is dq mm -hmm. by dt, yeah. so you just collect all the terms nicely, c minus q by c is equal to r into dq by dt, and you just do dt by cr is equal to dq by c minus q and integrate, right? Mm -hmm. You integrate and you find q as a function of time, and then you can find current as a function of time, function right? Of time, yeah. This would have been the charging circuit normal. The difference now is that this is also variable, right? Yeah, yeah. That is the only difference. No major issue. It's just like this. Like this. And this is also variable. So you have a situation where you have E naught sine omega T minus Q by C minus IR is equal to zero. Right? Correct? Yeah. Uh, okay. So we will write this as E naught sine omega T minus Q q by c minus r into dq by dt is equal to zero, right? Zero, yeah. Okay. We have to find your i in this circuit. That is our job. And the problem is that there are two places where variation is happening. Here also, here also, right? Like earlier, this was a constant, which was mm -hmm. making our life easy. Correct? So... We can write this as dq by dt r plus q by c is equal to e naught sine omega t. And we can write dq by dt plus q by c r is equal to e naught by r sine omega t, right? Yeah. This is just rewriting the equation like this. Now, this is a differential equation of first order and first degree, right, in q. First order, first degree. First degree. Right? Yeah. First order, first degree differential equation in Q. And we will yeah. soon, when we are doing differential equations, we'll soon see a proper method to solve this. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. Right now, I'll just show you the method. Like we'll see it in much more detail in the maths class. So what we will do here is multiply both sides of the equation by in by e power integral one by cr dt. Why one by cr? The one by cr this factor, right? Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. e power one by cr dt is e power t by cr, right? So t then, by CR, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. So this is called integrating factor. We are multiplying both sides of the equation by a factor which is one by CR dt e power integral of one by CR dt, right? So which is e power t by CR. Why are we doing that? Because this is in the form like this, dy by dx plus f of x into mm -hmm. y is equal to g of x. Yes, Instead yeah. of x, we have x is same as t, y is same as q, okay? Here, see? dq by dt plus f of f of t okay. in this case f of t is a constant function one by cr and g of t is a variable mm -hmm. function okay. mm -hmm. g of t depends on time 
f of t is a constant yeah right 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 so right yeah okay so i'll just write this one down okay i mean okay fine i'll just rub off and write here only one second uh hmm what i want to show you is how to find y in this differential equation this one that i wrote dy by dx plus fx into y okay so dy by dx plus f of x into y is equal to g of x suppose right we want to find y right right yeah mm, yeah so to do this what you have to do is multiply both sides by something like this e power integral of fx dx okay so let's multiply it right now e power okay. integral of mm. fx dx into dy by dx plus fx into e power integral of fx dx into y is equal to g x into e power integral of fx dx right right yeah yeah now notice that if you do y into e power integral fx dx right if i differentiate this see what comes let's try to differentiate this see first term would be this dy by dx into the same thing right mm mm-hmm. plus yeah. second term would be y i will keep as it is and differentiate this right differentiation of this will be this into differentiation of top part right which is fx f of yeah. fx yeah so basically you can see that this two terms here are actually differentiation of this right yeah yeah right right is equal to gx into e power integral of fx dx right mm mm-hmm. correct no yeah so now we can say now i will integrate this so i'll get if i integrate sin like this then obviously dx and d by dx and integral will cancel cancels so get y into e power integral fx dx will be integral of gx into e power integral of fx dx right correct both sides yeah. integration integrating uh, this part will cancel and this part will have an integral right hmm. right yeah. right right so this part is completely in x now right if you can solve this integral you will get the answer here and this part is has one part in x and one part is y so you'll just say y is equal to 1 by 1 by e power integral fx dx Hmm. and multiplied by integral of gx into e power integral fx dx right yes, yes, yes. right right so if you can solve this integral you get the answer of y right yeah yeah so that is the standard method to solve these types of things this 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 e power integral fx dx is called integrating factor you multiply it and then you will notice that this this part solves as y into integrating factor right Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that term's derivative is these two terms. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Now we will do the same thing here. We have this equation dq by dt plus. Uh, mm-hmm. Sir, uh, we'll do this in differential equations also, right? Yeah, yeah. Like when we do math. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what is coming. This is the function, right? Yeah. So now q is taking the place of y. T is taking the place of x. Okay. and this is your f function and this is your g function right mm-hmm. yeah it is the same form so what we'll do is multiply both sides by e power integral your f function dx dt now right 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 because there that time you're doing e power integral fx dx right yeah so this is yeah. e power t by cr and that is what i have to multiply on both sides so i'll just do e power t by cr Into dQ by dt plus Q by cr e power t by cr is equal to e naught by r sine omega t e power t by cr, right? 
now we'll notice that this is just the derivative of q into e power t by cr d by dt check it the derivative of this is this hmm. right yeah 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 right so it is equal to this now sin omega t e power t by cr and now integral sign in both so you'll get q into e power t by cr is equal to integral of e naught by r sin omega t e power t by cr right yeah yeah so basically you have q is equal to e power minus t by cr integral of e naught by r sin omega t e power t by cr dt right mm -hmm. now take the constant thing outside you'll get q is equal to e naught by r e power minus t by cr and you have to integrate what sin omega t multiplied by e power t by cr right yeah yeah this is the integral that we have to do this part right mm -hmm. just write this down write this down so that we can re refer back to this again e naught by r e power minus t by cr integral of this sin omega t e power t by cr yeah okay written no i wrote so yeah okay so now i have to integrate sin omega t into e power t by cr right mm -hmm. yeah but this is an integral of the form e power ax sin dx dx right correct a is equal to omega b is equal to 1 by cr mm -hmm. yeah and x is t right so how do we do this integral you can easily do it like you should be able to do it find this integral no solve uh, don't solve ax and all solve this one sin find the integral e power at sin of bt dt right mm -hmm. later we'll put a is equal to omega and b is equal to 1 by cr in that right yeah solve this integral I'll be back in two minutes to solve it.
Okay, have you gotten this? Uh, so this is actually a formula, right? So don't use the form. I mean, you should know how to do it also. You know how to do it. Yeah, like partial. By parts, right? By parts two times, right? Yeah. One time it will become cos. One more time it will become I again. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like be sure that you know how to do it. Okay. And then you can use the formula. And the formula is this. What is the formula? Uh, a power, I mean, e power ax by a square plus b square. Um, you can write it like this. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, just check that once with if it fits what you have gotten. I actually used uh, that a cos bx plus b sine bx, that one. Huh, but then root, take root outside, you'll get this, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. E power 80 by root over a square plus b square sine bt minus phi, where tan phi is b by a. Just mm -hmm. see whether it fits your thing, right? Yeah, yeah. It will fit. Your A and B will come as A by root A square B square and B by root B square A square, right? Yeah, yeah, it will, yeah. So, Rishi, you are getting this, right? Where is Rishi? Uh, he muted yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some disturbance in the problem. So. You got this, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, this is my integral. And now we will put A as omega, B as this, right? So we'll get uh, E power omega T by root over omega square plus one, one by, by C, C square, square R square, 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 square yeah. sine B, T by ER, right? Yeah. Uh, Sine B or sine A? Hmm. Okay. Sin... That seems wrong. Okay, I have A is omega, B is 1 by CR minus 5. Seems like we have made some mistake somewhere. Okay. Uh, you are getting sine T by CR, okay? You are also getting this. I got a uh, sign of cos, like I didn't do a cos. It should come omega t, no? Why is it? Okay. Uh, B is 1 by c. B is omega, no? What am I doing? B is omega, no? Sign B, B, yeah, correct. Yeah, that is the mistake, obviously. Uh, B is omega and A is 1 by CR, right? Yeah, 1 by CR. Yeah. B is omega and A is 1 by CR. So what we should get is um, 1 by root over A square plus B square, 1 by C square R square plus omega square E power AX e power t by, t CR, by cr yeah sin uh, bt my bt yeah. so that will be sin omega t minus phi and tan phi is equal to b by a which is omega by 1 by cr right yeah this is what is coming correct mm -hmm. yeah correct mm -hmm. and this was the integral and outside there was an E naught by R E power minus T by CR, right? Right, yeah. This was the thing, right? So E power minus T by CR cancels this and we get E naught by R root over one by C square R square plus omega square sine 
omega t minus pi, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So now actually I want to find i, so I will do dq by dt now, right? Mm -hmm. So when I do dq by dt, I will get i is equal to e naught by r root over one by omega square, no, one by c square r square plus omega square, and there will be an omega outside, and it will cos, be cos, cos omega yeah. t minus pi, right? Yeah. Okay, now, uh, okay, now this omega, so let's write it as, E naught by one by omega r, right? Correct. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. The same right. thing. So now what we will do is we'll take the r by omega inside the root, right? So mm -hmm. it will become E naught by r square will cancel, so we'll get one by omega square c square plus yeah. r square, right? Yeah. One by c square. Yeah. Right. Right. Right, and you yeah. get a cos omega t minus pi. Right, correct. Yeah, okay. Now, what we can say is cos omega t minus pi is the same as sine, uh, is the same as cos pi minus omega t. Right, mm -hmm. correct. And yeah, right, that is right. the same as sine pi by 2 minus pi minus omega t, right? Yeah. So that is the same as sine omega t plus pi by 2 minus pi, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So this can be written as sine omega t plus pi by 2 minus pi, pi by 2 minus tan mm -hmm. inverse this, right? Yeah. Is equal to cot inverse this, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And that is tan inverse 1 by omega CR, right? Because cot inverse will be equal to tan inverse 1 by x, right? Right, right. Yeah. So we can write it as pi by 2 plus tan inverse 1 by omega CR, right? Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah, correct. Now my total current formula is coming as E naught by root over r square plus 1 by omega square c square sine omega t plus tan inverse 1 by omega c r. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. This is my current formula. Just write this down and note how we have done it. We got it here. It was just we are converting to make it, we are converting these things to make it sign something because but EMF was sine omega t, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I want to find out the phase. So I need to make it sine again so that I can say sine omega t plus what phase plus something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, right, right. I've just converted it a little and I have converted this part also a little because I needed some E naught by Z something, right? Something I needed. Yeah. Because earlier also we have E naught by some resistance term yes. yeah. that used to be a uh, peak value of your current, right? Uh huh. Right, right. Just write this down. This is what we are getting for an RC circuit, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in HCV, he has not shown this derivation. He has. He will give you a nice method to do this this kind of calculation. Because you notice that the work involved here was quite a lot of integration and all, right? Mm, yeah. Long integration and after that simplification and then get it into this form. So there is a nice vector method to solve your complicated RC circuits. And that vector method is what he is teaching. So suppose you have this situation. Let's say your EMF is like this, E naught sine omega T. Then... I have three elements here, R, C, and L, three possible elements, right? Yeah. And I know the behavior of all of these three elements. I know that R, if it was simply R, there will be no phase difference, right? Yeah, no phase. So any R causes a current in the same direction as this, right? 
Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. So R you will represent with a vector along the x-axis, and that will the length of that vector will be the resistance. Okay. Okay. Hmm. If R will be represented by R in the I cap, basically direction, and your capacitance, capacitance, uh, always creates a current which is pi by two ahead, right? Pi by two. Yeah. So capacitance will be ahead of the thing. So plus. Pi by two. So this direction will be for capacitors, right? Mm, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Length of that vector will be the reactance of the capacitor. Reactance of capacitor was the resistance equivalent, which was one by omega c. One by omega. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this will be one by omega c long, and it will be a vector in the ninety degree to the x axis, so y axis direction, plus y axis. Yeah. Right? Sure. an inductor would be omega l is the reactance for the inductor and it will be minus pi by 2 phase right minus pi by 2 so inductors would be this way negative pi negative y right minus pi by 2 right yeah now all you have to do to find your resultant is take the resultant of this vector this vector this vector it might come like this it might come like this depends on the value right it might come like this right Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever your resultant vector comes, find out the length of that resultant vector and the angle, right? Right. right. Your current will be equal to that length. That length. E not by the length will be your total impedance. That quantity is called impedance. Z. The length of the okay. resultant vector. Mm. Yeah. And your phase will be omega t plus omega whatever t angle. That's theta. Yeah. Right. So. Mm-hmm. we'll see examples where we apply this so oh, the first example that now we'll see is the rc circuit that we just now derived by integration right yeah we just now did rc circuits no so we'll see that rc circuit right now so there is no inductor so we'll ignore this part right yeah so there is just rc circuit and now there is a vector like this 1 by omega c and vector like this both have 90 degree between them so resultant vector have has length of this much right Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This becomes your impedance, right? Yeah. And what is the angle? Tan theta, tan phi should be equal to perpendicular, which is one by omega c divided by r, right? Yeah. One by omega c omega r, right? C, yeah. So tan inverse one by omega c r is the angle here, right? Yeah. So if your EMF was this, your current becomes E naught by z. Sin omega t plus that angle, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And That's notice true. that z is e naught pi root over r square plus one by omega c whole square, and sin omega t plus the angle was tan inverse of this. Tan inverse. Of and this is the formula that we got, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we got by all that derivation. Right, right. but we'll get it now in one step by this vector method we will not need to do all that so it is a very nice way to get it you understand the benefit yeah. Yeah. the actual method is doing the integration after writing kirchhoff's law and doing the integration properly to get q or i or whatever right mm-hmm. <laughs> but you can always get this quickly like this so now for example if we had a resistance and an inductor right and let's say emf was e not sin omega t so your resistance vector will be r like this inductor will be down like this omega l right yeah, yeah right your resultant would be something root over r square plus omega l whole square right and Correct, yeah. this angle theta would be tan theta would have been omega l by r right But theta yeah. is behind, below, right? Below, yeah. so your current should be E naught by Z sine omega t minus theta, right? If minus, it was yeah, above, yeah. it would have been plus. If it was below, it should be minus, right? Yeah. So yeah. your current in this case would be E naught by Z is the length of this resultant, which is root over R square plus omega square L square. It will be sine omega t minus tan inverse. Omega L by R, mm. right? Yeah. So we already know the answer here. Like we know the answer now. What is the current in the circuit? There is no issue. 
we can actually derive it also by doing the proper integration so we have this situation and we have to do the integration it is e not sin omega t minus ir minus l di by dt is equal to 0 right mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh you can do the same steps again di by dt into l plus ir is equal to e naught sin omega t right yeah right yeah you say di by dt plus i r by l is equal to e naught by l sin omega t right yeah and this equation is now in the form that we did the integrating factor and all right mm -hmm. e power f uh, of integral of f of x uh, yeah e power integral of r by l dt in this case r okay. yeah 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 so it will be yeah. e power rt by l is what you multiply on both sides here and this side also right yeah so what you will get is it is the going to be differentiation of i into e power rt e by power l r by right yeah, i yeah. into e power rt by l will be integral will be integral of this into rt by l, e power rt by l right Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So what you will get is i into e power r t by l will be integral of e naught by it was l right yeah e naught by l sine omega t e power r t by l dt right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and e naught by l can be taken out you have again the same integral sine omega t e power r t by l right dt and I know formula for this. Uh, this will be equal to e power r t e power a a t e power r t by l by root over a square plus b square so r square by l square plus omega square right yeah yeah and sine of omega t minus phi where tan phi is b by a tan b phi a. is equal to b by a e power a x no our b is e power ax sin bx. So a is this, b is this. Correct. So omega, omega by, by r, r. Huh, this is omega. the thing, omega l by r, right? Yeah. Correct. And this is my integral here, and there is an e naught by l here. So i is coming out to be e power minus rt by l into e naught by l into this e power rt by l by root over r square by l square plus omega square sin omega t minus tan inverse omega l by r, right? Right, yeah. yeah. This cancels this, l goes inside becomes this, right? Yeah, Notice right, now right. the formula is exactly the same that we got, right? Yeah, same. same. Yeah. So obviously like this is too much effort, but you need to know that you can do it, right? And we will learn the differential differential equation solution in our differential equations class. But right now, uh, use the vector method, right? The vector method is very nice. Just read hmm. through now. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, LC, sir, LC circuit also similarly. LCR circuit also similarly. LCR circuit, there are three things. There's R, one by omega C, omega L. Now it depends whether this is bigger or this is bigger, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. So you'll first take the resultant of these two. In some cases, it will be like this, where total here will be one by omega C minus omega L, and this side will be R. So you'll take resultant this of this and this, right? Right. In yeah. some cases, it could be omega L minus one by omega C, and you'll take resultant of this and this, right? Yes. Yeah. And depending on whether this is bigger or this is bigger, the phase will be either plus or either negative, right? Correct. Yeah, plus or minus, yeah. So you can now read till like page number 322, section 39.6, end of that. Just go through it. He will not show you the integrations, but like we have done the integrations now in two cases. Okay. Okay, so, yeah. So this is your I'm understanding sorry. of AC circuit, huh? what? Yeah, no, I just got disconnected.
या सो रीड टिल थर्टी नाइन पॉइंट सिक्स ओके basically he is showing you this vector method how to apply and all in different situations and very little debate is left in the chapter we'll just finish it off in the next physics class and we'll be done with this okay um, okay yeah have they done this lc lcr circuits and all in allen so far yeah yeah we did okay so this method they have shown yeah we did that yeah, method we, did. we didn't do the integration actually the hmm. long method hmm. so they just told you that do this yeah okay same thing they said no lcr what is head in hcv yeah, yeah i think it's the same yeah don't get confused with any other method or notation and all okay like do the exact same thing that is there in hcv what you have done the vector method vector method yeah like sometimes in some books they gave different uh, uh, terminology or different uh, convention and all of which one to take positive and all but don't do any other thing read hcv and do what he is saying okay okay and, yeah and you know that you can actually integrate it and do it also right mhm integration will eventually always become something like this e power ax sin bx sort of integral we just have to simplify and all okay mm, yeah right yeah the only part was the only tricky part is the first mm. step where you have to multiply the integrating factor yeah that anyway we will discuss in our next no one or two classes in our differential equations so you should use everything that you know in both math and physics like if you are unable to do the normal vector method like but right now the vector method will work vector method works for all series sort of circuits if there is a parallel circuit then it will not work oh okay so if there is a inductor in parallel and all no then it will not work directly then you have to think of something else but parallel circuits are not in syllabus so you don't need to worry about that right now mm -hmm. but yeah. obviously kirchhoff law will always work right like even in parallel circuit suppose somebody gave you a parallel circuit right resistance and a capacitor right hmm yeah kirchhoff's law will always work no hmm yeah so, yeah so yeah. you can yeah, split yeah. it as i1 and i minus i1 or something right some q mm -hmm. came here and you can write one equation for this one equation for this right hmm if yeah. you are if you are able to integrate you might still be able to do it by the long method even though you don't know how to handle like vector method it will not apply Mm -hmm. yeah right right okay so that is why we are seeing that method also because it is the actual way to get it right okay okay yeah yeah i mean here you can say that emf the q by c here should be equal to the across this right potential across this and also should be same yeah it should be same yeah and you can write uh the problem will be that the dq by dt will not be the same, same as the current right it will be yeah, i1 cannot. here and i minus i1 here right yeah it will be yeah so we we'll have to think of something to do here maybe it is slightly hard but yeah i'll see like if needed we'll discuss one or two examples of these kinds but it is definitely not in the advanced syllabus so don't need to worry about it right now Mm. Just okay, read, yeah. read till thirty nine point six. Last parts we'll finish in the next class. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all for now. Uh, tomorrow you guys are free in the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Ten thirty is fine. Yeah. Okay. Then probably we'll do maths class tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you then. Bye. Bye, Bye sir. sir.